recording? Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Sister Girls. My name is Haley Prasad and today we are talking about fossil fuel. I also have a special guest with me today. Her name is Diana Rose. Hi there. Hi. So can you please tell me a little bit about yourself before we get into our show? Sure. My name is Diana Rose mm -hmm. and I am a sustainability expert based out of Southeast Queens, Jamaica. And I also own a sustainable food company called Jars of Delight. And I'm just so happy to be here with you today. Yeah, thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. I will ask more questions about you later, but we're going to get on to fossil fuel. Sure. So what is fossil fuel? Or better yet, what are fossil fuels? Now, fossil fuel are hydrocarbons, and it's primarily coal, oil, um, or natural gas, and it's formed from the remains of dead plants and animals. So the definition of fossil fuel, for those who are wondering, it is a natural fuel such as coal or gas, and it's formed from the geological past from the remains of living organisms. Now, I ask the question, what are fossil fuels? Because to my understanding, there are three. There is coal and oil and natural gas. And for those of you who do not know uh, what they are, oil is liquid uh, petroleum, it's greasy, it's a fuel, and it's um, lubricant. Um, coal is a piece of glowing, charred, or burned wood, and it's also a, cons um, a combustible uh, substance. And then, of course, there's also natural gas, which it is gasoline, gas, fuel, petrol, uh, kerosene and naphtha. Mm -hmm. So do you know like when oil or coal is going to run out? Do you know? So right now based on the information and knowledge and research that we have we're looking at an estimate of 2015 that we'd be running out of fossil fuels. And 2015? That, I'm sorry, 2050. Mm -hmm. And that has to do with the amount of consumption because we know that it takes millions of years to form fossil fuels mm -hmm. but the rate at which we're consuming them um, is the issue so around 2050 scientists are saying that we're going to be running out which is so scary to think about yeah because we depend on fossil fuel a lot um, so scientists believe some scientists they believe that coal will be um, out by the year 2020 which is just next year Wow. Yeah. and then oil will be run out by 2040 mm -hmm. and by that time um, scientists will have to find another way for um, to use fossil fuel because you know we depend on it right. our worlds depend on right. it we have our phones we have our technology we have cars and everything relies on fossil fuel mm -hmm. um, there's advantages and there's also disadvantages when it comes to fossil fuel mm -hmm. and every good thing has a bad side to everything. it everything mm -hmm. yeah so some advantages Everyone knows that fossil fuel is cheap. You know, um, it does not cost as much. Um, there's things like wave energy and hydrogen fuel cells, which is much more expensive right. than fossil fuel. And it's very plentiful. There's a lot of it. I mean, you know, that's kind of obvious because we have a lot of technology around us. Right. So fossil fuel is very um, plentiful. Mm -hmm. um, it's also non-renewable meaning that um, it's going to take like a long time for um, us to get it. Right. You know, as you said before, it's going to be 50 million? 50 million. Yeah, um, 50 million years. I, I would say that the issue with um, fossil fuels and our consumption is that a lot of people aren't educated mm -hmm. on not just what fossil fuels are, and you did a great job at explaining what, what the main three or four are, but a lot of people outside of our world, they don't know what that is. More yeah. so, they don't know um, what it takes to um, retrieve fossils in order to um, trans transform it into the energy that we readily use every day. So I think a large por um, portion of what we need to do is really educate people educate on, educate others, right? Yeah. On how, what they are, why it's important that we really um, consume them at a responsible rate, and as a sustainability expert, you said one of the key words is non-renewable. So the goal is to really um, find alternatives. And as you said before, there's always a good and there's a bad to um, fossil fuels. So I feel like our job right now is just to really educate people on um, the consumption side of it. Yes, of course. So as I said, fossil fuel um, is the reason why technology exists. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, oil can be transfer, um, transported over long distances by pipeline. So it's um, it's very like active, like we could get it easily. Mm -hmm. um, 
But these advantages cannot save what you're about to hear. So the disadvantages. Um, mines clear up the habitat from the surface. It also destroys land, um, which is known as land degradation, mm -hmm. um, which that means it decreases the quality of land. Um, it also causes acid rain and climate change, meaning that it releases greenhouse gases. Um, it also creates water pollution. Most of us may or may not know that. Um, water pollution, also known as water um, contamination. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of the big issues. And then, of course, there are emissions, which is the discharge of gas or radiation. Right. Do you know any um, anything about the uh, land uh, degradation or the water pollution? Right. So let's start with land degrega degradation. Yeah. So when you think about healthy land or healthy soil, um, there is definitely a surge in eating healthier food, mm -hmm. right? Eating more, pl eating more plant-based and eating more organic. But when you think about it, if the land and the soil that we need in order to grow these um, produce aren't healthy, then essentially we're not really eating mm -hmm. healthier, are we? So um, that is a huge, huge issue that we're having in terms of soil health. And we know that, like you said, a lot of the disadvantages of fossil fuels is that it's degrading our land. So um, that is one of the big um, issues. issues that I like to speak about because it's one thing to say, okay, I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat healthier, I'm going to eat better, I'm going to eat local, I'm going to source locally, but is the land healthy? Is the soil that we're using healthy? So that's a big one. Yeah, yeah and people thing. don't realize that fossil fuel could affect these um, chances of like eating healthy. You know, at the, in the long run, right. you know, it, it, it um, sorry, it affects us right. on in the long run. It does, and yeah. we're thinking about right now, but I think of my children's generation and beyond, and what will the soil and the land, what would the health of the land be at that point? So, and especially when we're talking about by 2050, the um, depletion of these fossil fuels. So what is going to be the alternative? What are we gonna do at that point? So the idea is really to, while some things are irreversible, um, it's really to redeem the time and do what we can right now in order to um, you know, protect our land and protect our soil. Yes. Mm -hmm. So just a little recap. So oil will run out by 2040 and coal will run out by 2020 and that is because of the supplies and technology. And fossil fuel allows sending out gas, heat, and light, and much more. So it's very useful. Mm -hmm. However, is it very healthy? That's right. the big question. Now, fossil fuel also contains ra radioactive materials, um, mainly known as uranium and um, uh, thorium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, T-H-O-R-I-M-U-M. -U -M. Uh, so these are all like elements that are part of fossil fuel, right. and they're all are radioactive, which right. many do not know that. Right. Yeah, um, most air air pollution comes from burning fossil fuels, and it also causes global warming. So not many would know, and not many would understand that. And yeah. a lot of people need to inform others. Um, when we were young, and when I was in elementary school, I was learning about fossil fuel, right. but not many, not many adults knew it because I would come home asking my parents right. about fossil fuel they wouldn't know about right. it. And it was us little kids that had to teach our parents. Right. So if it continues like that, that means that not many adults or not many children, because let's be real, a lot of children don't pay attention to like the science part right. in school. So that means like a lot of children, a lot of adults don't really know about fossil fuel. And right. even though the curric curriculum in school mm -hmm. repeats these topics about fossil fuel and like other topics such as acid rain, greenhouse mm -hmm. gases, not many children really pay attention right. to it. Right, they don't pay attention and it's almost in a, s in a small amount. Mm -hmm. So it's not like there's a whole course or a whole curriculum on these essential, um, these essential topics regarding um, planet health. So I feel like, but you're right, because even when I was in school, which was mm -hmm. a long time ago, um, you know, we, Global warming, those were terms that we heard and a lot of the terms we didn't pay attention to. So now that I'm much older, <laughs> um, I realize, and just being in my field, I realize how important it is to really start from um, preschool, elementary. Yeah. And like I said, a lot of it trickles into um, consumerism, how we are consuming, not just our fossil fuels, but how we consume energy, how we consume um, even our clothes that we wear, because all of everything that we do 
we need energy and all of this energy is coming from fossil fuels so it really affects every industry it's affecting um, you know every household so it's really um, you know it's, it's really a matter of just being persistent and what you're doing yes, is definitely. one of the ways that you can connect to younger people because let's be real young people listen to young people so by you just really um, giving the facts and information that you're doing I feel like we're in a good position to really change the trajectory mm -hmm. of where we're going in regarding to fossil fuel usage and depletion yes so do you know where these um, materials are located like where oil comes from and coal comes from because there's two complete different places right. that are far apart from each other that produces coal and oil or like they um, they have it there mm -hmm. so like for example coal they have a factory in Poland and then in the Gulf of Mexico they have an oil well right. uh, located there so then that's how the pipelines come into play you know that's how they transport the materials that we need um, so there's some important facts that we need to know. Because I said that uh, fossil fuel does affect our technology, what would happen if our fossil fuel ran out? So you think about how much we use technology right now, mm -hmm. right? Um, in schools, in the hospitals, at home, at play, a large majority of everything that we do on a daily basis involves technology. So if you think about fossil fuels running, running out, and that is what's fueling technology, then we have the also the depletion of technology unless we come up with another alternative so um, because things are heavenly ran on technology it's 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 a it's big it's a bigger issue than um, than just saying okay we're depleting our fossil fuels right mm -hmm. so we're gonna say to our young game even our gamers so maybe this is another way that we can reach other generations and other sectors that may not have a passion for environmentalism like we may have but maybe you can say look gaming you know that's yeah. technology <laughs> you won't have your games you know so maybe that is a great way to um, incorporate you know what we're trying to educate our communities on but so if we deplete fossil fuels and if we have no way to really power these games and this technology then like you said what happens yeah yeah so I like that you said that there's an alternative because most things do have an alternative mm -hmm. it could either be like a better way or you know less advanced um, mm -hmm. less advanced uh, mm -hmm. way so there is biofuel, which is from living matter. Yep. That's like one of the biggest alternatives from fossil fuel. Now, we depend on fossil fuel every day. Every day. And without fossil fuel, we won't have the ability to run our world. And what a lot of people say on like these websites and on Google, and like even in school, mm -hmm. our world is nothing without fossil fuel, yeah. which says a lot, you yeah, know? it does. Yeah, so globally, fossil fuels provide over 85% of the energy that we cons wow. consume. That's, that's a, lot a large of, that's number. That's a large number. That's yeah. a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah. So as I said before, land degradation degradation is increasing and fossil fuels are widely used in construction. Did you know that? No. This no. you're teaching me something right now. No, <laughs> yeah. I didn't. So construction, uh, they use a lot of fossil fuels and when I was doing when I was um, looking up research. Some, mm -hmm. Yeah, when I was doing a lot of research on like fossil fuels, I also learned something new and they used coal in industrial revolution. Oh, ah, yes. Yes. So, there you go. Um, I didn't, well, I mean, I knew a little bit about it, but like I didn't know that, you know, fossil fuels. Yeah, and how in depth the process was for yes. fossil fuels. Wow, that's so great. So for those of you who are wondering, the industrial revolution was a time that the factories had machines to produce um, like materials, materials like clothing mm -hmm. and food items and things like that faster and quicker than handmade items. Right. So the Industrial Revolution, because it was um, machines that they were using in factories, they would obviously need coal, and coal is part of uh, coal is part of the fossil fuels. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So is one of the is one of the major fossil fuels, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So coal is like one out of the three. Um, some say that there's five, but you know, like t the the other two would be falling into the coal and oil and right. natural gas. Um, yeah, so in many homes, people burn gas, natural gas, in the stoves while they're cooking. And yes, it's oil, so that also goes on to fossil fuel. Now, you as a... Sustainability expert. <laughs> sustainability, sustainability expert. expert. Mm -hmm. um, if you are trying to impact other little girls about yeah. um, the world and trying to tell them about um, fossil fuels, uh, what was one thing that you would tell them? What's one thing that you would try to help them with um, or 
um, influence from them? Sure. So for me, a large um, part of my education and my platform is to talk about consumerism, like I s said before, and the idea that we do not need to consume as much as we currently do. And, and that's just in every facet. So even, um, like you said, the Industrial mm -hmm. Revolution, that whole boom and um, that whole explosion in terms of faster production leads into fast fashion. Mm -hmm. So you think about all the clothes that we wear every day, but ha at the rate at which it's made and the waste that is also accompanying, accompanying how fast it's made. So f one, one thing that I like to tell our girls is it's okay to re reuse your clothes. It's okay to rewear your clothes. And by that, you, you're doing a small part of um, consuming less and in turn using less energy to produce clothes. So it's okay to wear your clothes and it's fun because what it helps you to do is get creative mm -hmm. and it helps you to reimagine your wardrobe. So I have a very minimal wardrobe and that really helps me to be conscious, not just about clothes, but about how much I'm consuming in all aspects of my life. So um, I think when you start with that and then you make it relatable to people and you meet people where they are in terms of cons consumption, then you get into the, well, you know why we don't, you know, buy as many clothes from fast fashion companies as we, as, as you know, as we, sh as we do. It's because of these reasons, because it takes energy to make, s to make these clothes. And at, at the rate at which the, the clothes are made, we consume a lot of energy and we burn a, a lot of our fossil fuels and we are adding to the problem and the depletion of it. So that's one way that I would address, um, and help our, our young women to see that, you know, it's okay. It's okay to, you mm -hmm. know, reuse your wardrobe. It's fun. Yeah. Once you tell them that, you know, fossil fuel is a big part, like once you tell them about like the clothing, because that's relatable, right. that's something that they would understand. Mm -hmm. Once you tell them that there's a bad side to it, they would probably try to change that. They'll tr right. probably be the people to, you know, make it a better place right. and make it a better world because, you know, you have to, you have to make it relatable some way. Yep. There's always a hook that you have to yeah. have in order to inform others. Yep. Um, because there's there's many types of people out there mm -hmm. that um, needs to needs to be like told in a different right. way right and educated these. on these topics so yeah. like you said you meet people where they are so for some people it may be the environment for some people it may be fashion for some people it may be technology so the idea is to really like you said which is so important meet people where they are yeah mm -hmm. so you mentioned technology now right. That means that they um, are burned in order to move cars, trucks, ships, airplanes, trains, and spacecrafts. So because of um, everything that we have, because of everything that we use, mm -hmm. fossil fuel is actually like very important to it us. Is very important. But of course, there's Sorry. bad mm -hmm. um, things coming with it, like mm -hmm. um, land de degradation, um, water pollution, and emissions, right. which is the radioactive. Um, there wouldn't be much transport without our fossil, fossil fuel. fuels right so even though it is bad we should be a little bit thankful for it because right. you know you guys won't be able to watch your tv without yeah. the energy <laughs> right so true. yeah right. but of course we have to inform others that fossil fuel isn't you know the greatest you know as mm -hmm. of course as i said many times before that every good thing has something bad to right. it you know right yes yeah. so um that's a little bit about fossil fuel of course there's many um more to say about fossil fuel whatever you learned today please share it with others um, so I want you to talk just a little bit about yourself um, oh sure no problem so as I mentioned before um, I am a sustainability expert and I'm currently hosting workshops mm -hmm. um, at the Queens Library regarding sustainability so a few of the things that we talked about today um, which is just I guess the first class would be a general um, understanding of what sustainability is and then bringing in all these terms, so fossil fuels, carbon emissions, greenhouse gas effects, to get people to understand the language because it's a language, right? Mm -hmm. We understand it because this is our field and this is our passion, but the goal is to really, when people hear the term fast fashion or they, when they hear the term zero waste, um, when they hear the terms fossil fuels, that they can say, oh, I know what that is and have a, um, a basic understanding of it. So my goal is to really educate, like I said, my community in terms of why sustainability 
is important right now, especially right now. And I would say more so for people um, of color, because if you think about sustainability and you look at the face of it right now, you don't really see too many um, involvement. You don't see too many young women, young women of color, young minority women really leading the forefront in sustainability. And I feel like it's important that we do, um, that our voices are heard and that we really make our mark in terms of that. So that is my current job right now. And I also own a zero waste catering company. That's very nice. And it's, and it's really fun. Mm -hmm. So we cater everything in mason jars because mason jars are glass and they're recyclable. And our job is really to, as a business and also at, in the food industry, which we know there's a lot of waste that happens in the food industry, is really to do our part. And so when people ask, why do you cater out of mason jars? That's a great segue to say, oh, well, this is why. Because we're a sustainable company and we understand that there's so much waste that goes into the food production and we just want to do our part to be um, responsible. So um, that's really the goal right now. So I also do lectures and um, different workshops and classes. Yeah. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. So what inspired you to do this? When did you begin? Mm -hmm. uh, what year? And how long are you planning to um, advance okay. this community and this group in the community? Yeah, so I started in early 2007. I was going to Hofstra University and I was pre -med, a pre-med student and I thought that I was gonna be a doctor. Mm -hmm. I thought I was gonna be a pediatric ER doctor. And I took a course in sustainability at Hofstra and I loved it. I just fell in love and I changed my major literally the next day to community yeah. health. Yeah, my teacher, like he says that how, like once you're in college, you yeah. change your majors like seven times. <laughs> I don't know about seven, but you do change a lot because yeah. you're finding yourself, you're figuring out what you like. And, and, and when, when I took that course in sustainability or um, it was, um, I, I want to say community health really, mm -hmm. I said, oh my God, I love this. I didn't know what I was going to do at the time with that degree, but I knew it was definitely something that pulled on my heartstrings. So if you think about maybe 10 years later, um, I started Jars of Delight, which is my sustainable um, meal prep company. and. From there, people started to ask me about sustainability and why am I doing this? So I figured that was a great market, meeting people where they are, as we talked about in terms of food. So um, it was a great opportunity to really educate the community on what it is. So I'm excited and I, con and I intend to, c to continue as long as I can, maybe get my um, doctorates, maybe, mm -hmm. a, you know, Diana, Dr. Diana Rose of sustainability, who knows? <laughs> But um, I love what I do, and I just love encounters like this. I love speaking with our younger generation, especially people who have so much passion on these topics. So I intend to continue for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Sister Girls, right, our group, we have young girls from 8 to 17, um, and it's just a, basically a little girl group that mm -hmm. we have, you know, going to library presentations, going to these parades, and going yeah. on TV to inform our viewers. Like, what is your group um, like? What do they? Uh, what's the age group or like? Okay, so there's technically no age group, mm -hmm. um, and I would love to invite sister girls to one of the workshops to really talk about what you do in the community. And I've I've met you all before at mm -hmm. Senator Sanders Earth Day event la earlier this year, yeah. and you all did such an amazing job. So. Um, there's really no age group. Anyone is welcome to come. They're always, my workshops are always free and always open to the public. So if you're interested, I'd love to, you know, talk more about it after the show and see how we get you girls involved. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to be involved. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't at the expo mm -hmm. uh, earlier this year. I know that some of the sister group members were there mm -hmm. and they were talking about all these different opportunities yeah, that they seek. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was very nice. Yeah, it was um, nice. And you know, it's our way. This is our chance and our way to inform these young kids and these adults out mm -hmm. there about everything that happens in our world. You know, yeah. it's not only about like, you know, the environment, like they also need to be informed about other issues that are going on. And it's very important that they understand what's going on, exactly. you know, because they have to teach our young generation and our young young generation needs to grow up in a beautiful community yes. and they also have to teach you know the generations Behind to come them. Mm -hmm. yeah because i know that a lot of like i know a lot of people um, like my parents grandparents like they don't really know much about this right. and that's because they didn't have a chance or they didn't get the get opportunity the opportunity right. to listen to the groups and listen to others you know it's a lot of young kids that are informing adults out there right and it's very nice that there's, you know, other action groups out there to right. help, um, you know, the people in the community. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a very beautiful thing. 
Um, so our show is ending soon, and we did talk a lot about fossil yeah. fuel, and we got to meet meet the wonderful Diana Rose. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. This yeah, great. thank you so much for coming. So that is everything about Diana Rose and fossil fuels and the dangers. So I hope today you learned something new. Sister Girls is always a way to inform younger kids and adults out there about our environment and other issues. And it's very important. It's very nice that kids um, know about our environment and our uh, climate because, you know, they need to teach the others and they also need to be aware of the things that are going on. Right. Yeah, so in our episodes, we share information about the environment and, of course, we share information about our community and other things like clothing. We also teach you guys about re, um, reduce, reuse, recycle. Yes. We make a lot of projects and we show you how to make things out of bottles, um, cardboard and stuff like Ooh. that. Maybe one time you could come and oh, we could absolutely. help. absolutely. I'm yeah. there. Just let me know when. One day we can make like a birdhouse out oh, of cardboard. That you know? sounds like so much fun. I made a lot of... Um, I made a lot of DIYs out of things like uh, plastic bottles, yeah. cardboard, and wipes, containers. You right. know, you could be very creative when it right. comes to these things, you know? Right. Yeah, so our job is to inform you guys how to make this world a better place. We are leading the way to save our planet. That yes. is our motto. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we just want to be, you know, a older sister to you guys. And we want to teach you guys about a lot of different things. And of course, like Diana Rose can be like a model to me. You know, I could take, you know, a lot of advice from oh, you. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm here. I'm your sister girl. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> your sister girl. Um, we also encourage others to share the information that they learned with, you know, their family yes, members please. or friends. Please. It's very important. Please. And also every day we learn something new and every day the information and the knowledge we take in shall be spread on to others. Now, young kids out there, please be aware of our environment and our community because I'm telling you, there's a lot that we need to know. Now, we need to know how to help and we need to know how to contribute because if we don't know how to contribute, how can we really help? So thank you so much for watching the show. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much, Diana thank Rose, you. for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I hope you enjoy this show. Thank you so much for watching and stay green. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you a lot. <laughs> Great. I love it.